Hey, uh, welcome. Glad you, glad you braved the rain to come out tonight. Thank you for, for coming back. We were yep. we were not really sure if we'd run anybody <laughs> off or, or what would happen there. Uh, let, let's begin with let's begin with the prayer. Father, it would be a mistake to attempt anything without including you, and so we wanted to make sure that you are, uh, well, that you're invited. To open, listen to our hearts right now as we, we say we want you here. We want you a part of what we're doing uh, tonight. Uh, thank you for loving us. Thank you for displaying that love through your Son. May we look more like him every single day. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So, anybody do any uh, <coughs> extra class extracurricular activity extra <laughs> study learning researching anybody do anything to to learn anything about themselves this week what 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 you find interesting that um i watched a video uh -huh. and I, I found that there are actually other people who are i think there are eight uh -huh. i think nine okay i think Alright, so I was the only one. <laughs> you weren't the only one. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> well, did, did anybody find something uncomfortable? Did anybody, uh, <laughs> did anybody uh, uh, discover anything that kind of made you squirm a little bit and kind of go, well, <laughs> anybody? Or am, am I the only one? Eight. Seven times a superiority complex. <laughs> that happens. That happens. Anybody else? Anybody else care to share anything they found out? Not expected. You don't have to have done this. I was just curious if you if you were uh, curious. I'm curious if you were curious. So, well, uh, we are beginning a new. Uh, all right, so each week, um, the next few weeks, we're going to talk about a triad. This is the gut triad we're going to talk about. No, it's still good. It is. Uh, it's not sticky. Yes. The, gut, the gut triad is going to be this week. So. Gut. Yes. Can handle anything. Yes, I thought that was like French, like the goop triad. No, no, no. That's the gut. That's gut. the gut triad. So, gut triad, because we have, we have three triads we're going to work from. Uh, this week is the gut. Next week is the heart. And the week after that will be the mind. So this is our, our few from the gut. So there are three things that will revolve around is instinct, autonomy, and anger. Instinct, autonomy, and anger. Instinct, because that, it's from the gut. It's from a spur of the moment decision. I act to reaction. When, a, when something happens, I have a reaction to it, and I, I spring to action. Uh, autonomy is because each of them want some form of autonomy. And they, ha they each have a different way to earn it. You'll notice as we go through it, and, and, and guys, this is the hardest thing about the Enneagram is now that I've studied a lot of it, you can kind of pull back and you see a bigger picture. Each week we're coming in and we're zooming in on one thing and you're going to be like, it's just hard to kind of follow some things as we're jumping around. But when we zoom out towards the end, you're going to really start seeing a bigger picture and it's really cool because you're going to learn that there are no, like there, there's, so just real quick, just so you can get a brief example of this autonomy. One is going to withdraw for autonomy. One is going to earn autonomy and one is going to demand autonomy. There's never two that do the same thing in any triad we talk about. And we're going to talk about lots of groups of three. And there's never a duplicate of the same thing that happens. Does that make sense? They're, they all handle things differently. So there's never a duplicate in the same triad. So, again, as we go along, you'll start seeing that stuff unfold. But it could just be hard to grasp in the beginning. But I, I just think it's, it's another piece that makes it unique. Uh, and then finally, anger. This, this triad deals with anger. It is... It is inside them on different levels, and we'll talk about that as we go through them. Uh, we're going to play a game also as we go, so pay attention to each number. And I would like you to, as we talk about the number, this, this week we're talking about these three right here. This is our gut triad, 8, 9, and 1. 8, 9, and 1, but if you're like, Jesse, I'm a 7. What does that have to do with me? Uh, these three numbers up here, these three numbers up here will either be a health number or a stress number. So you will be able to relate to one of these numbers at some, some degree, I promise. Anytime we talk about three numbers ever, you will be able to relate to one of them because you're connected to it somehow. Uh, seven goes to one in stress. So when we talk about one today, you're going to hear yourself a lot. You're going to be like, man, that's me. I'm probably a one. But really, it's just because when you're stressed out, you feel that way. Uh, two, Joe's a two. He goes to eight in stress. 
and three goes to nine in stress. So those are our stress numbers, and then the five, six, and four, that's some of their health numbers up there. Uh, so, but we'll play a game, back to the game. Uh, at the end of us talking about the eight, the nine, the one, I'd like you to, we're gonna just talk about an animal mascot for, the, for that. All right, I got some animal mascots. So when you hear me describe the eight, when me and Joe are describing the eight, you're like, this sounds like this could be this animal. All right, so we'll just do that at the end of each of our numbers. So just kind of be thinking about the characteristics that we talk about. In the and and, and there's animal. no right or wrong answer with that. It's just, right. you know, I, I see this aspect of them in this animal that sounds like that number and, and throw it out there. I mean, we'll have a few that uh, recommended or, or suggested, but it's, it's not the answer or anything like that. It's just, we're just having fun with this, trying to kind of understand what these numbers really look like. All right, so let's, uh, let's kind of get rolling. So this is our eight, our challenger, our protector. Remember I told you the Enneagram likes to work from a number because there's no weight that comes with the number. But Jesse, I need weight to it. So there is a challenger, a protector even. Because some people don't like the term challenger. It means i got to step up and I'm making people feel bad. I'm in the face. I'm challenging them. Well, maybe you like the idea of protector, the mama bear. You're like, oh, I can relate to that one. That's me. So you may, you may, want, to, you may want to be able to relate to this one. Like deep motivation is to protect themselves and determine their own course of life protect themselves and determine their own course of life the, no eights are our guys that are like I'm gonna pull myself up by my own bootstraps I'm gonna dive right in there I'm gonna handle my business okay but the reason they feel this way the reason they feel this way is because their basic fear is being controlled they don't want to be controlled you cannot control me okay it's just if you start holding them down and putting the pressure on them I mean, if you if an eight goes into fast food and they're the low man on the totem pole, they feel horrible. They're just like, I hate this job. I can't wait to quit this job. I'm going to climb the ladder as fast as possible. That's an eight. Okay? Yep. So their, their self-image, and, and eight self-images, is, we, we spoke about this last week, I am strong. What, what they want you to see in them is strength. And, and it'll come out in a lot of different ways. But that, but that comes from gifts. Um, they are they are direct. Um, that's a <laughs> and and and, and these, these are gifts to the world because um, when when you think about uh, we'll get some of the other numbers that are not so much that and you go oh yeah I can see how that is a benefit to the to the world they're loyal authoritative uh, self confident um, they're they're protected uh, they are protectors uh, defending the underdog and once again when you when you think about that. You think that's a sign of strength. I'm going to be strong because you're not. And it, it's it's not a, um, not so much, I'm looking out for the underdog, but I want you to see that I'm strong. Now, it has a nice side benefit of, of helping out the underdog. But in the end, what, what they need you to do is they need you to see them as strong. And so that comes with some gifts there. <coughs> but the flip side of that, is the vulnerabilities um, they can it can kind of be controlling you know when when you're direct and authoritative you know and, and uh, you know out there like that that can sometimes come across as well here we go we're gonna do it my way um, kind of controlling or they can be insensitive um, have, you, have you ever been around someone who was very direct and what you needed was some sympathy <laughs> and there's well, just get over it <laughs> you know kind of mentality um, not always a sensitive, you know, sometimes, sometimes we, we, we need something else and so that can be a vulnerability for them. Um, they can be self-centered, uh, they can be combative, um, uncompromising. Uh, these are all uh, kind of some of the, the, the negative sides, if you want to put a negative spin on these. Uh, maybe like an aggressive bulldozer. Um, they can just kind of plow through with, without a whole lot of concern about other people. If, in, a, in a negative sense. Um, but once again, we want you to see them as, as strong and, and confident. Yeah, eights, eights have an inner circle. Once you have achieved to be inside the eight's inner circle, you become one of the underdogs in his life. He will then protect you. But the eight doesn't have a huge inner circle. It's hard to get in there because back over to like one of his fears is being betrayed. So he doesn't let a lot of people into that inner circle. He, he doesn't want to be betrayed so only the closest of close get in there, but once you're in there, the eight, the eight will fight to the death for you. Uh, so they're top style, assertive, unemotional, debating. Uh, I even their top style is command. 
command, and I, and I want you to know that this rubs me wrong. It's, it's hard for me to pick up on command, and I, you know, Danny's my residential aide with Danny. <laughs> <laughs> so he's my, he's my residential aide. You know, when I, when I, I got somebody for each number, and it's kind of in my life that I look to as I'm reading about this stuff, and I come and talk to him about it. I'm like, Danny, here's a, here's a remember this time this happened. And so this was a time where his talk style rubbed me wrong, but luckily I started having an awareness of the Enneagram, and I was like, he didn't really mean that. We were in the office, and a guy came in who was needing some help. And I was kind of running around doing some stuff, and Danny was also kind of in the middle of some stuff. And he said, Jesse, give this guy a ride down, down the road and get him some gas. And I'm like, waiting on the pleas. <laughs> and, and, and it just came off. And, but that was Danny just saying, hey, man, you got a second? Can you give this guy a ride down? That's, but Danny, he, he just was like, I would like this to function and happen in this moment and just be direct about what needs to happen. Problem and, solvers. Yeah, just problem solvers. Yeah, and, and, and it's not, Danny wasn't trying to do it out of no love or any of that kind of stuff. He was just like, well, this is what needs to happen. And he approached me with it. And, and for me personally, like in that moment, what I would do normally before I had an awareness of the Enneagram, I would have made up an excuse why I couldn't do it. Because you don't get to tell me what to do. I also got a little bit of that can't be controlled thing. <laughs> I don't want I don't want you to tell me what to do. Like I want to I want to do my own thing cuz I'm an assertive person also. And so that's that's just their talk style. And once you start to learn, man, grandpa, grandpa loves me. He's not just commanding me around. It, that's just kind of how he talks. And, and and it just becomes oh there's an understanding and 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 there could be a lot of patience and a lot of grace with that. Uh their self talk that's how they talk to themselves. I'm fighting for my survival. Others will take advantage of me. They, they really believe that it's like everything I do, I'm trying to better myself. I'm trying to pull myself up. And if I slip up and show my weaknesses, you're going to take advantage of them. And I will not show them to you. That's why they're unemotional. Because if I show you my emotions and my weaknesses and my tears, you get on the inside of me and you can use that to betray me. So I'm not going to do that. So each of the numbers uh, come with a, a passion. Um, they've been labeled kind of like the seven deadly sins. Well, there's nine numbers, so there's a couple more that we'll deal with in there. But each of them come with a passion. And I don't want you to think of it as a uh, sin in the sense of um, it, it's bad and evil. Yes, don't, don't misquote me here. Sin is bad and sin is evil. But when we talk about the, the passions for each number, what we're, what we're talking about is the truest definition of sin is to miss the mark. And that's why we have Target up there. Sometimes you're just a little bit off center with the way that your personality kind of guides you. And so sometimes you're not really uh, fully focused on where you should be. And sometimes you kind of miss the mark. And, and for eight, um, their, their passion uh, is lust. Now, don't, don't think of this only in terms of like sexual lust, although it could be. Think of it in terms of they are assertive. They are they are um, um, they are intense. What they lust after is an intense um, uh, feeling. They 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 want to, uh, like I said, just an intensity of control, uh, self-expression, the, these kind of things. That's what they're after. And so um, they they have that. Uh, just I don't know. Just the word intense just comes to mind um, when when you think about this. this the idea of power hungry almost. Mm -hmm. Just like I I need the power and I want to control the power. It's more of their, their lust after that power. Yeah. <coughs> the, um, and, and, and as we as we go through all of the, um, the passions, I, I, I was reminded of a quote by St. Augustine. And he said, seek what you're seeking. Just don't seek it where you're seeking it. Now, that was a pretty good quote for what we're talking about here. Sometimes we, we go elsewhere. We kind of get a little off-center with the, what we're trying to accomplish. And we go about it the wrong way. And so seek it not where you're currently seeking it. Seek it where it needs to be sought. Um, on the passions too, we'll spend a whole week, one of our classes are going to talk about those and some spiritual disciplines that can go with those and helping you with that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. <coughs> so this next, this next uh, passage uh, section is about childhood message. There, there's two different kinds. Uh, a wounding and a lost message. Now, the wounding is, is from the sense of there's some unconscious messages that um, 
we didn't really pick up on. Um, we, 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 we got them. We, we heard these messages, but um, they, they were kind of a reaction to them. Um, what I, what I, you know, we all receive these messages from our parents and from other people, but they, are, they have this profound effect on us and on our growing identity and how much we're allowed to kind of really be ourselves. And what it does is one message kind of tends to stick with each type. And so the wounding for the, for the eight is the world is terrible and only the strong survive. And so what, how they react is, well, I gotta be strong. And so the, this, this wounding message that they, that, they, um, uh, that they picked up on was, I gotta be strong to survive. What they need you to tell them and what they're seeking for is this lost message. What they want the world to give them is this lost message you will not be betrayed. And so they, they try to seek that out. They want the world to give them that message. You will not be betrayed. If you're taking notes, uh, some of you might be, some of you may not. If you're a parent, all these lost messages, there'll be nine of them when we're done. Uh, write those down and just tell the nine of them to your kids as often as you can. Uh, they're just, when you, when you see them, you'll, you end up like, I don't relay that message to my kid very well. Uh, but the guy that did our class uh, at NCYM this year, he's like, I have all nine of them next to my office desk. And he says, in some form, I will take it and reword it and send my kids a text. Uh, and just, hey, you know, I love you and just want you to know that I'll always be here for you. Instead of saying, be betrayed or something. That, would, that can encompass a few of the lost messages. Uh, so if you're just taking notes as a parent, those messages get lost. And, and that's not because you didn't send it very well. It just may be your kid just didn't pick up on it. You were dropping it off for them, but they just didn't grab it. So it just be direct with it. All right. So what do you think about apes and animals? Lion. Rhinos. <laughs> <laughs> Rhinoceros, a lion. What, what is it in, in those that you think it is? What, what do you see? Oh, okay. What were you thinking? A leader. A leader? Okay. Yeah. I mean, a lot of our eights are that and that's the great leaders. And <laughs> you've got to be bolder. Any, any other animals come to mind? A bear. A bear. You said that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, um, bears don't have, like, a huge circle of friends that they protect, you know? Yeah. I feel like Tend a lion probably protects, you know, a bigger group, so bears kind of more... Yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely think like a mama bear for cubs, being a protector. I'm going to be strong for you. Um, I like that. What you got, Jesse? All right, here's the ones we got. Hey! <laughs> we have a wizard. You do? And that, that's really a lion. It's not a tiger. No, nah, as a tiger. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and, and that has to do with uh, tigers are more alone. Uh, they're more the alone animal, but they're still very aggressive and assertive. Uh, they didn't get the name man-eater for no reason, uh, but they, they're not afraid of that stuff. Uh, the one I think I like up here the most is this rattlesnake, though, uh, because they let you know when it's about to get real. <laughs> like, it starts rattling. I'm giving you a warning. I'm giving you a warning, but it's about to get real, like in heat. And they don't back off the conflict. I mean, it's like rattlesnakes, you approach it, it's like, and it's real. They start shaking. They're ready to attack. They don't, they don't run away from that. And I, and I just think that these, these animals represent, these are both like the whole head on charge, nose first. Have you seen a video on that rhino plows that Jeep? Like it's crazy. <laughs> uh, there's a video that went around for a while and it plows his Jeep and this person's filming it and the rhino turns and starts running at the person filming like they, they take off. <laughs> but it just, they're, they're just, they're plow first. They're plow first animals. I, I can't see very well, head first. Let's go. So, all right. Those are animals. Yeah, we, we got two more to go. All right, so nine. Deep motivation to maintain peace and avoid conflict. Maintain peace and avoid conflict. The reason they do this, their basic fear, is because of a lost connection and relationship because of conflicts. They have a fear that you are going to stop being my friend if I bring up a conflict that we're having. I'm not going to bring it up because I just have a fear that you're going to sever what we have, and I, and I just don't want to risk that. That could be with a mother. That could be with a best friend. That could be with a child even. Like you're having a hard time with your child, you're like, I just don't want to bring that up because they're going to hate me. Bring it up. You know, that's just one of the good things is you got to push through some of this stuff. They bring a lot of gifts uh, to our world. They can see 
things from a multiple points of view. When you think about eights, they're they're very very direct and this way and, and you know, the nine, their peacemaker kind of mentality. And I can see your side. I, I can see your side. They can see things from multiple points of view. They're very peaceful, uh, patient. They they long suffering. They put up with with people. You know. In the side side. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, but it comes with some vulnerabilities as well. Um, they can be complacent. Uh, have, have you ever asked an eight where you want to go to lunch? And they, well, here's where I want to go. I'm direct. Here we go. You ask a nine, hey, it doesn't matter to me. Now, the thing is, it does matter to them. We all have an opinion. But they're, they're more worried about this idea of, of conflict. And they'd rather just, yeah, oh, whatever works for you, and, you know, so that, to cut down a conflict. So they can be complacent, uh, but they can also turn into kind of passive aggressive. Uh, you know, they, they can be stubborn. Um. They're the most stubborn number on the internet. <laughs> it's weird because once they made their mind up, they're not so complacent with the things they made their mind up. They are hard set on what they've made up their mind, but everything else is, oh, I'm easy going, man, whatever. But once, once they've made their mind up, they're separate. And that, and that unassertive nature can really just, it, it, can, it can be uh, the wrong thing at the wrong time. You know, sometimes you just need a decision. You know, and they're way, you know, they're unass unassertive. And I'm, I'm just going to stand back and let things kind of happen. Once again, they're just trying to keep, keep the boat from rocking too much. So. All right, so the talk style is agreeable, receptive, noncommittal, and tends to wander. That if a nine tells a story, they're all over the place. They're kind of like leaning over here for a while. And they're like, oh, wait, 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 what was my original story thought? Like, it's just kind of how nines, because they just, they just like talking. They're just, they're people, you know, they like people. It's, they're agreeable. Ah, oh, yeah, sure, you know, that's great. Um, and they, they're not committal too, because they don't, they just, well, it, it's just kind of like, well, what's your favorite color? Or what's your favorite band of music? And they kind of know what you kind of like, and they're kind of like, well, I kind of like rock music. I heard you like rock music. They don't want to <laughs> rock the boat. They're just kind of, what you like is what I like. And so their self-talk is, I am content. Others pressure me to change. But I'm content. Don't, don't pressure the nine. And I'm just, I'm not going to be pressured into swaying one way or the other. I'm going to be fine right here in the middle. That's just, that's what they're telling themselves. I'm okay being okay. They think that unity, I mean, don't, don't have fragmentation. Boy, that unity is just, is just, um, is key for them. Uh, their passion, uh, and, and once again, don't think of this as a as, as a sin. Um, think of this as um, just kind of how they miss the mark. Uh, think of this how they're not quite on center where they where they need to be. Their passion is sloth. Now, sloth is not um, sloth. Don't think of them as lazy. There's plenty of hard working nines. That's not what this is. But what it is. It's and they're just they want to be unaffected. They just kind of want to go through life and just be unaffected by things. They don't want to this this big roller coaster of, of no. They just want to want to be easy, you know, even keel all the time. They kind of want to be unaffected by the, the things that are going on around them. They're not going to get too worked up over here or too worked up over here. It's going to keep the peace. Autonomy again. <coughs> they, they withdraw for autonomy. If I'm over here doing my own thing and everything's fine, all the wheels are turning. I'm good right here. So they're going to withdraw and pull back for their autonomy. And so the message they, they uh, kind of latch on to, that this wounding message, is it's not okay to assert yourself. Why? That causes conflict. If I assert myself, that's going to that's gonna rock the boat. If, if, if I, I mean, even for, even for simple things, like, hey, where do you want to go eat? Well, I don't know. If they had that last night, you know, they're going to they're gonna say, no, I just had that last night. And then all of a sudden there's conflict. You know, um, it, it's it's a tough it's a tough deal, and so it's not okay to assert yourself. But what they want the world to tell them, and what they need to hear, your presence matters because they do. Your vote counts. They count. They are they are people, and they are valuable. But they're not going to be assertive and get out there. And so what they need the world the message they need to hear is your presence matters. Again, this is one of the best things you can take from our class, guys. When you start learning what these people are. Rachel is a nine, my coworker, like, and I relay this message to her a lot. And it's very valuable to her when I tell her her presence matters. Because a lot of times it's like, Jesse's assertive, he's gonna make a decision for us, and I'm gonna roll with it. That's great, I'm really glad that she's kind of a team player that way, but I'm like, Rachel, your opinion matters, and I really wanna know what you think on this. 
Uh, what animals you got? Squirrel. A squirrel? <laughs> a dove. A dove. A koala? Like What'd you say? A dove. A dove? Okay, Pete. A turtle. A turtle? A sloth. A sloth. Okay. All right. Wait for that one. Here's what we got up here. A sloth. A sloth. A sloth up there. I mean, that is the thing. Uh, but see, so some of you got some, uh, well, that's an elephant. That's big, huge, strong. Yeah, it is. But have you ever been to the zoo and the elephant just kind of stands there? It's real cool. You, I, our zoo, I don't know if you've been to North Rock Zoo for long, but when I was a kid, I rode on elephants at the North Rock Zoo. Do, could you imagine riding a rhino? No. You could ride a rhino or a bull. Like, bull riders, that's crazy. They don't put rattlesnakes you get, in the petting zoo, do they? Right, no. But you can pet elephants. You can ride elephants. They're just cool. They're just cool animals. They're just, they're peaceful, obviously. Just like a nine, if you poke them too much, they're angry. Remember when the anger triad, you poke a nine too much, they're building that stuff up, and it's going to release, okay? They bottle their anger up. They bottle it all up, and there's a moment where the cap can blow. You know, you don't want the cap to blow with an elephant. All right? and, and so whales and dolphins, they're on there because it's just sea creatures. They all, there's not a ton of predators for these animals. They're just, they're just out there swimming, having a good time. It's just cool. Like, just leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. And, and, they, and they're in the po their positive outlook. Nines are happy. That's a good dolphin. Uh, sloth is one really cool thing. Is sloths, wherever they're born, there's not many trees that they live in. I thought sloths would move all around and stuff, but they actually kind of live in maybe three to five trees their whole life. It's kind of their, their home. That's a, that's a nine, too. A nine, Rachel, for example, grew up in Louisiana, Louisiana, Harding, here. She's fine. She doesn't have this big spirit of, I don't even go live somewhere crazy or all over, but it's just wherever home is, it's home. She, wants, she likes adventure, but she likes to come back home and be at home. And it's just, that's a, it's kind of a sloth thing, too. So pretty cool. All right. Uh, oh no, I went too far back. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this is the one. My one in my life is my wife's song. You'll hear me talk about her. Uh, so. Hey, your wife's the one. Yes. My wife's the uh, one. Joe, we're the same person. That's crazy. All right. One perfectionist or reformer. Perfectionist or reformer. There's deep motivation to be good and do things right. To be good and do things right, their basic fear is being defective or corrupt and not good deep down. That's why they, that's their deep motivation to be good. So they obviously picked up on the message when they were a kid, like good little boys and good little girls do this, and that that was real. That really stuck out to them, and they and they're like, oh, I have to do the things that you said make good little boys and good little girls. Like they're going to come home with good grades because, and they're going to be proud of them. They're going to be like excited to show you the good grades because that's what good little boys and good little girls do. And so that's, that's the one. And it's a deep motivation is to be good. You're like, that's it, everybody's be good. No, you don't get it, how good they want to be. They're, they're, they're the one in class that they raise their hand. Didn't you say the homework was due today? You know, and everyone's like. <laughs> they, they have to be we, the best. Like, it has to be perfect. And it bothers them to, to no end. Not like some of us who I don't care. But <laughs> it's so funny me and Leslie couldn't be more opposite. But this is my stress number. And we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. This is where I go in stress. So obviously, I mean, every, every number brings gifts uh, to, our, to the world. The, uh, you know, the idea of just being, they're conscientious. Um, they're, they're principled. You know, they're, they're, they've, they've got um, morals. They're going to they're gonna follow the high ideals. Uh, this idea of justice, um, they're, they're super reliable. Um, they're improving themselves and the world. They're, they're trying to perfect things. They're trying to make things better. Um, but that comes with a kind of a downside because not everything is perfect. And uh, if they're trying really hard to be perfect and you're not, they can kind of be judgmental. And uh, that can be kind of tough. Uh, they can be really inflexible. That's not, you know, here, here's, here's the rules. Here's what we got to do. Uh, we need to follow this. And, nope, uh, it can be critical of others, uh, even, even with the, the small things in life. Um, <coughs> I was thinking, um, I found this quote from Mark Twain. He said, he wasn't talking about ones necessarily, but the, the quote is, good in the worst sense of the word. <laughs> 
Um, and, and that can be ones when, uh, on the negative side. Just good in the worst sense of the word. Uh, just, just not a too, too perfectionist you know, kind of thing. So. Uh, inflexible. Uh, Leslie loves the schedule. Leslie loves to know what we're doing. She wants my, our date nights planned out. And I just have to plan them, and it's, what are we doing next? What's our time frame? And I'm just like, Leslie, can, can like, we just go with the flow? Like, what if something happens that sounds fun, and we just want to go do that? No, she doesn't want that. We don't stray from the schedule. We don't stray from the schedule. And, and just, just, I'm telling y'all, that good thing, and, and this isn't everyone across the board, but, like, Leslie, she grew up and you know, in a Christian family, and her mom and dad said, these things are right, these things are wrong, and Leslie took all of that to heart. So much so, and I asked her, can I share these stories? And she's okay with it, but and but please don't judge my wife. Please don't think negatively of her or, or just think she's, think she's better than people because ones can have, have a tendency of, well, they're, they're good, and when other people make poor choices, they're just like, that's a bad person. Like, they, they will, they'll think that. And it's like, people make mistakes, and Leslie has to learn that. But she, she struggles with that sum of, well, that person made a bad choice. Well, we gotta forgive them. It's, it's okay. And, and she, she understands it, but just for an example of, who Leslie is, this was a Valentine's Day after we were married. Uh, I was just like, I've never tried wine before. You're like, you want to try wine? Like, I've never tried it before. Leslie had never had a sip of alcohol. And I was just like, well, let's, let's just try this wine. She's like, no, there's no way I'm going to try that wine. And I was like, this is like, it's a little taste of it. And she's like, no, because for the rest of my life, anytime someone ever asks me if I've tried alcohol, I'll have to say, well, yeah, it's like this one sip, one time. I'll, I don't really drink alcohol. And not, that, not to say that alcohol, drinking alcohol is bad, but for Leslie, her whole life, she was told drinking alcohol is bad. So she could not find it in herself to just sip it, to just taste it, because it would have made her corrupt. <clears throat> she just saw that as like, that's not going to be a bad thing. And, and not all ones obviously see alcohol that way, but that's just, that's just a snippet of Leslie and her oneness of, Leslie, that's not going to make you a bad person, but she just didn't do it. And, and, and it's like, I respect that in her, because that's just how she saw the goodness in those things in her. But. It'll, it'll absolutely drive, and, and I'm, I'm speaking for, for my wife, Sherry, when, when she comes home from work, if, if the dishes are not done, and we were going to sit down and watch television or watch a movie or something like that, things have to be perfect before you can relax. Me, I'm just like, well, let's go watch, okay, let's go. You know, and she comes in, and she's like, well, let, let's get the dishes done first. Are you kidding me? We're, we're gonna go have fun, but no, you, this has got to got to make things perfect. It's kind of this perfectionist kind of thing, um, and it just those these are kind of some of the things that kind of drive them and uh, and kind of drive other people nuts, you know. But when we start start looking at it, how different people are, um, one, ones go to seven in health. Like I go to it in stress, so ones come to seven in health, and that's a big thing for Leslie for her to have fun, for her to give up. That stuff, and like, yeah, let's go have a blast. Everything has to be in order and put away and done right. Like, the house has to be clean to have fun. So, there's no, Jesse just sits there and, like, okay, let's clean everything. You know, because I get stressed out and I become the one and help her clean everything. So, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> then we get to have fun. All right, so the talk style shoulds and oughts. You should do this, or you ought to do this, or uh, correcting. They, they, they correct, and man, this one right here, preachy, when I get stressed. Me and Leslie's arguments look like this. Uh, we, we don't argue a ton anymore because, again, the Enneagram has helped me through a lot of this. But when I get stressed, I become this person. I become preachy. I, I have this tone. If you just talk to me normally, I don't talk like this. But I'm in my preacher mode right now, and I talk like this. And Leslie's like, you're talking down to me. And I'm like, Leslie, I'm not talking down to you. <laughs> and she's like, yes, you are. And so uh, what, what ones do, what ones do, ones go to four. So she just, she just becomes a recluse and grabs all the blankets and covers up and hides in the bed. And I'm standing over the bed like, we need to talk about this. We need to fix this problem. And she's just like, and she's like just leave me alone. Leave me alone. And, I, and, I, and I'm trying to fix because ones want to fix. Ones want it fixed. And so when I stress out and become a one, I need to fix the problem. But she's not letting me fix the problem because she's decided that she doesn't care about nothing and she's just going to curl up in this ball and hide from the world. Because she's become like this, a very sad four, a very unhealthy four in that moment. And, 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 we, and that, those were our arguments until I learned this Enneagram and learned that I didn't need a shift to be the, let me stand up big and we're going to fix this problem. Instead, I sit on the bed and I talk softly to her. And I say, so this is kind of what we're dealing with, what's going on. And man, my marriage is just better. 
but I wanted, I wanted to fix, I wanted to yell, I want to become this preachy one. Uh, I am right most of the time others should listen to me. That's kind of what ones feel in the back of their mind a little bit. Well, I, I got this all figured out. Why are people not listening to me? I, I know the best order of this to do. One's a part of the, we'll again, we'll talk about this stuff as a competency triad. They just want to be competent. And they've thought about it, and they put a lot of thought into it, and they thought of the perfect way to do it, and it's going to get done, and it's going to be complete, and they're going to enjoy it. Because they love completion. They love completion. I took my, uh, my former youth group on a mission trip one time, and we stopped off at a, at a fast food restaurant, and uh, they were already behind <clears throat> when, um, when we got there and brought in a van load of, of kids, and it just overwhelmed them. And about 20 minutes into just, just chaos behind the counter because there wasn't, there wasn't a good manager going at the time. And it was, you know, it was a fast food, so there was a lot of teenagers working there and that kind of thing. And before I knew it, Sherry had stepped behind the counter and was barking orders. Not barking, but she was like getting things in order, getting the orders out and saying, okay, now we need to get with this one out, and now we're getting this one out. And she's taking the reason now, who's got this one? And she got her place meals out. She jumped in there and was like, we, this is not working. <laughs> we, need, we need to get this together, you know, and it just it just cracks me up that that uh, you know we got we got to fix this. We got to um, jump up there. And you're not doing a very good job here. Let's uh, let's jump on that. Um, so their uh, their passion, they're they're in the gut triad, and they all kind of have an issue with with anger. But this is their specific um, passion and their specific way that they miss the mark. And don't think of it in terms of um, just anger, but think of it in terms of anger that leads to resentment. Yeah, eights have an outward anger. <coughs> ones on the other side have a... Now, nines try to forget it. Yeah. Nines try and forget the anger. Think of, think of the, no conflict. They, they want to make the, con the anger go away. Um, so eights, they just kind of throw it in a bottle, really. Eights externalize it, and ones internalize it. And so it becomes internalized. But... It kind of bottles up and it leads to um, just this bottled up frustration with not everything is perfect. And pretty soon they're, they're resenting the imperfections of the world. And so um, they, they need to see things as, as, as perfect, but it's not. And so they kind of get resentful because I'm trying my best to be perfect. I'm doing my best and I'm over here doing this. And I, why can't, why can't y'all pull your weight? Why can't you get your act together? Um, and so that, that's something that they're going to struggle with and, and, and struggle with. And that's one way that they're going to miss the mark. Now, childhood messages, they're wounding. Uh, something that they heard or, or you know, even not heard, but they picked up that it's not okay to make mistakes. Um, my wife's an accountant. <laughs> you know, that, that fits. Um, you know, you don't make mistakes. And... That, that pursuit of perfection, that pursuit of, of uh, making sure everything is done right and principled, all of these things, that's, that's what they kind of uh, have identified with. But what they need to hear is, you're good just for who you are. Not because you're perfect. Because this anger will come up in them because they look around and, and first they're, they're angry at themselves because they can't be perfect. And then they're angry with other people because they're not perfect either. And so, uh, what they need here is, hey, time out. You're good for who you are. And it's an awesome thing. Uh, so, I've saved everything Leslie's ever written me. Uh, anything that she's ever, like just something she drew when we were in college and gave to me. I saved all that. Every love note, every note when I was in college, I saved all that. Uh, and, and so, one thing I saved was this. Uh, and it was... This was uh, before we were engaged, probably by a couple of months. And it says, the way Leslie feels. And it's 14 things that she feels. Uh, some of it's pretty personal, but I wanted to read one of them to you so you can really, you know, if there was any, any doubt that she was the one. She says, I feel pressured to perform all the time by others, but mostly myself. I never feel good enough or that I have succeeded in anything. Again, here I am just one in the crowd. I'm excited about getting good grades and having just cleaned my whole apartment. But one minute later, does it 
does it matter to anyone? No. You can see the pressure she puts on herself. Uh, and in one of our books, it talks about how one has a voice inside their head that is tearing you down at all times. And you think everybody has this voice, right? No. We don't all, mine kind of like builds me up a little bit. <laughs> Unless I'm stressed. I get stressed, I start thinking I'm awful. But, but the ones, they're tearing themselves down at all times and they just think that's normal. And that's, that's not how it should be. Um, you, you want your voice to build you up. All right, let's do, uh, let's do animal. What animal you got? Like an organized hive with bees. Okay, that's right. good, that's good. All right, anything else? Other animals. Spider. Yeah, that's an animal. Animal kingdom. Yeah. Shark. Shark. Okay. Why shark? Just <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. There's bees. Where? Where it is. Uh, so yes, uh, just the hive mentality of these two animals, and also the bee goes to every flower and takes the best, the perfect, and makes honey. Uh, beavers are very organized. They build something. They have structure to it. Are you saying all ones are mm -hmm. little puppy dogs? Uh, no, this is actually the, they can't stop correcting, so it's just like a yapping dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just like, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> That's not my example. That's actually from a book. I didn't come up with that. Uh, just, uh, just one last thing about ones that then we'll be done. We got any other closing thoughts, Joe? I was gonna say share. Well, I was, I was just we're we're gonna cover a triad each week, and this was the the eight nine one uh, triad, which was the gut triad, and the other two triads, the the two, three, and four, are the heart triad, the feeling triad, and then the five, six, seven, the head triad, the thinking triad, and that doesn't mean that the gut, um, you know, is, is more distinctive or that the, the thinking is, is smarter or that the, the heart triad has, has more feelings. Um, really what it is, is that's, well, that's a component of your psyche that is able to least function freely. You kind of, you, you guard around that and it, it, you don't allow it to flow like it should and like it, like it needs to and like it would be super healthy, that's kind of the one you guard. And so, you know, Jesse's a seven. That doesn't mean he's, you know, smarter than anybody. I'm not, I'm a two. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm more feeling than, than anybody. That those, are the, those are the ones that we are most guarded uh, uh, around. So just as far as the triads uh, concerned, I just wanted to, well, next week we'll, we'll get into the, the heart triad. One last story about a one real quick. Uh, ones will let the littlest thing ruin their entire day. So if you ever have this happen, uh, and Leslie definitely will let this happen, like one bad moment in a day can ruin our day at the zoo, all that kind of stuff. Uh, our book talked about a lady who went, was going to like basically the Grand Canyon. They were driving six hours away, and this was before cell phones, that kind of stuff, and she forgot her camera. And it ruined their entire day. Every time they stopped, she thought about what a gorgeous picture this would be with my family. And it just let it ruin it and ruin it and ruin it. Uh, and every moment, her husband's like, honey, you gotta get through this. You gotta get over this. We gotta get past this. Guys, there is always, there's all, no matter what number you are, you have something that's just triggering you, something that's, that bothers you, something that that's sets you apart, that makes you different, but God loves you. God died for you. God gave us so much. Embrace life to the fullest. And it's gonna be hard in those moments, but when you see someone hurting, you gotta love them. I think the Enneagram is doing a great job of helping us just kind of see what number they are and how to love them, how to, how to be receptive to that. Uh, and so I can talk to Leslie through that now that I know that she's a one, I can talk to her through that moment. Hey, it's gonna be okay, we'll figure this out. It's gonna be fine, it's good, it's okay. But beforehand, I used to just like, get over it. That's not obviously the best way to handle it. Because I used to just think, I used to think everybody felt like me. Like 
Everybody just kind of thinks like me, right? Well, they don't. And so that, that's what's really good about this. Learning about... Thank God. Right. <laughs> Joe, that was me. No. All right. All right. Uh, I'll say a prayer. Thank God for coming to class. Uh, God, thank you so much for who you are. God, I thank you for making us each different, each of us thinking just differently, God. Because uh, we need all of this in the kingdom, God. Thank you for these people here to learn about our brothers and sisters. And may we build love on people like they've never been loved on before, God. Uh, just really be able to extend your arm to them. Um, allow us to be blessed over the next few days. Walk in your way. Seeing us as I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.